Good evening. Tonight it is Caleb's pick, and he has chosen him 114 for us. Christ, the life of all the living. It's a little bit of a longer hymn, so we'll sing just verse 1 of this one. Christ, the life of all the living. Verse 1, hymn 404. Hymn 114. 114. <laughs> Christ, the life of all the living. Christ, the death of death, our foe, who thyself for me once giving to the darkest depths of woe, through thy sufferings, death, and merit, thy eternal life inherit. Thousand, thousand things shall be Dearest Jesus, unto thee. All right, we've got kind of a longer section this evening in the book of Philippians, chapter 1. We'll read verses 12 through 30 of this particular chapter. So a little bit longer. It's entitled, Paul's Chains Advance the Gospel. Now I want you to know, brothers that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard that to everyone else, and to everyone else, that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached, and because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that, th that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to, deport, to, to, to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. I'm convinced of this. I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. But whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. A lot in this section. Marcus? there and disappeared. Caitlin. Paul was talking about how, yes, he was in chains, but because he was in chains, the gospel was being spread. Yeah. Yeah, and how is that happening? It's kind of interesting. He talked about a couple different ways that it was happening. Isabel? Because I thought he was in chains because of Jesus. Yeah. Paul wasn't shutting up just because they locked him away in prison, was he? 
He was talking to the prison guards and anybody else that he could talk to about Jesus while he was in there so that more and more people, even um, in his prison, were learning about Jesus. Caleb? People want to stay up to a boat. Okay. That's an interesting part of the conversation that Paul has there, right? And then there are two different groups of people outside of the prison, right? Those that um, are spreading the gospel um, out of good motives because of love for Jesus because they see that Paul is now unable to do so, and they say, well, people need to know, and so we better get going. And then there are those that are doing it because they're trying to be popular or because they're, they're trying to compete with others. Um, and Paul says, ultimately, as long as Christ is being preached, right, as long as the content is what it is supposed to be, he's not going to care uh, about the motives. He's just going to rejoice that Christ is being preached, right, and that the word is getting out there. That's not to say that it's okay to twist the, the gospel or that it's okay to do things from bad for bad reasons. Um, he's just saying as long as the content's right, as long as Christ is being preached, right, as he says later on, then we'll there, then we're, we can celebrate and rejoice that the word is getting out. Caitlin, he kind of had an inward battle with himself, saying. It's better to be in heaven, but I need it here. Yeah. We see the heart of a Christian in Paul so very often, don't we? Um, we often say ever since the day of our baptism, our soul yearns to be in heaven, um, to go and be with Jesus. That's what we want. It is better by far, says Paul as he talks about it. And yet, if God leaves us here, well, it must be because there's some work to do. And so we'll be happy about the work that we're doing and that we get to do in this world, too, as we live um, our vocations as parents, as children, um, as teachers, as pastors, whatever it might be um, that God has assigned for us to do in this world. Um, we'll do it out of thanks for our Savior and everything he's done for us. Caleb. Paul is really good at being the good in things. <laughs> in Philippians, he really does, right? Um, we'll get to that verse eventually that is our theme this year, but rejoice, right, in all things, right? Um, what, a, what a, an amazing thing that is um, for Paul to say, for him to do, and for us to try to do, right? To rejoice no matter what. <laughs> I could do better at that, I think. Mm -hmm. Isabel? He said, um, some familiar words from him for me to live is Jesus, but... Okay. That to die is one thing. Yep, very good. Yeah. Anything else in this section? You haven't talked much about the end of it yet. He says, no matter what, conduct yourself in a manner worthy, right? And he actually says, for those who are doing it for all the wrong reasons, this will be a sign to them that their judgment is, is secured in God. And that they're not able to, to throw him into confusion or, or, or consternation or give him trouble or us trouble either, right? Um, so we just keep our focus where it belongs, in other words, right? Keep our focus on Christ and his amazing gospel and everything that he has done for us. And all the rest of it will take care of itself eventually, some way, somehow, right? Um, God will make sure um, that he takes care of us. And so we can yearn for our heaven, and we can work while it's while we're here, and we can rejoice all the way. What a wonderful reminder as Paul speaks to us from chains. Anything else? I'm sure there's stuff I forgot. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, please help Caitlin, Caleb, Izzy, Marcus, Mommy, Daddy, and all we know and love have a good night's sleep. Help them to fall asleep and sleep all the way through the night and wake up happy and healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Have a great night.
God bless.